need to be involved with what is going on in the kingdom of God. Amen. Nothing that I've done, nothing special, but I thank God for my father choosing me to be involved in the kingdom of God. And so we're going to look at Acts chapter 6, verse 7. Acts chapter 6, verse 7. And if we can all stand for the reading of the Lord. All children, you stand. Adults, if you have your faculties and your limbs, you reverence the house of God, you reverence the word of God by standing. And so the word of the Lord reads in Acts chapter 6, verse 7. And the word of God increased. Say increased. And the number of the disciples multiplied. Say multiplied. In Jerusalem, great. And a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. A great number of the priests, of those who ministered, were obedient to to the faith. And so tonight I want to talk to you, or even teach from this subject, advancing his kingdom. Amen. Advancing his kingdom. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love and kindness. We thank you for all that you have done. God, we give you glory. We give you honor and praise right now. Father, we thank you for being here with us and your angels. How you encamped around us, oh God. Father, we had three souls to go down in Jesus' name this morning. Father, this house was full and packed this morning. Father, we had one filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Father, we thank you for what you're doing. You're adding to the church daily, such as to be saved. Father, nothing that we're doing be because it's of you that we, Lord God, are in the kingdom of God. And we thank you, Lord. We ask that you give us revelation, understanding, and clarity in this house, God. We ask that you, will, Lord God, bind every spirit of distraction that will come and take, Lord God, the word and the seed out of our hearts tonight. Father, I pray, give more resources. Give us more people, more leaders in the house of God. Those who are not afraid of the gospel. Those who are stand, God. We are asking you, Lord God, shift them right here. For there's work that needs to be done here in this house, oh God. And we ask that you, Lord, bless us. That as we go forth and we stay faithful to the kingdom of God, Lord Jesus, we thank you. In Jesus, and clap your hands on your heart. Advancing his kingdom. Advancing his kingdom. I thank God for what he has done. As I said this morning, we had three baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and one filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. This is happening because God is involved in this. I can never ever feel like, hey, it's just another Sunday or it's just... God is always going to do something for the kingdom of God when we are involved. I, God is going to always do it. The question is, are you going to be involved in it? And so every time I come to church, I'm looking. Right now, I have the mindset. I was telling somebody today. It's not that I'm being arrogant. I'm not trying to be arrogant at all. But every time I come to church, my mindset is somebody is going down in this water. Every time I come to church, I say somebody is about to get filled with the Holy Ghost. You might say, why? You think you're a good preacher? Not at all. I don't think I'm a good preacher at all. I don't think I'm good at all. What I'm saying to you, it is God's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. So I'm getting to a place my faith is rising more and more. That every time those doors are open, I'm beginning to say, hey, guess what? Somebody is about to get born again. Somebody is about to get saved. Somebody is about to be added to the church daily, such as to be saved. And so this thing about advancing, I'm talking to you then about that tonight. Advancing. What is the definition of advancing? Well, let me give that to you. It's about moving forward. Or it's about doing things or this purpose, purposely doing things according or as going forward or pressing your way or going forward. We are advancing. I want to tell you, New Life here at Bill Lake, we are advancing. Tell your neighbor, we are advancing. God is a God of increase. God is always and always will be a God of increase. You don't never see God working things on this little bitty and saying, well, this is how we're going to be. We're going to be a little small apostolic.
public church. Nobody's going to know about us. Everybody be quiet. It's just going to be about 50 of us. It's going to be about 30 of us. Maybe about 20, maybe 10. That's just going to be. And people try to say, well, hey, numbers don't matter. Numbers don't matter. I'm sorry. Numbers do matter. Numbers do matter. Now, there's a book in the Bible. You know what I'm talking about. It's called what? Numbers. So don't ever tell me that numbers do not matter. Because when you tell me that numbers don't matter when it comes to the kingdom of God, that's telling me that you don't care about people getting saved. We need more numbers of people being saved. Right. I'll tell you right now, if I'm sitting here and I, you know, if I have a church, a new life was here, and we, we, we got to the end of the year or we got to another two years and, and we were sitting here with ten people or five people, I'm telling you, I'm packing my bags and I'm going home. Because I'm not going to be sitting right here or sitting down here with nothing advancing. It's not my kingdom. It's not my vineyard. It's his. And so I know that he's a God of increase. And he's not a God where we stay static or we stay in place. Or he, God wants to expand his kingdom and his territory. God is always going forward. And God is a God of order. So that's why when a church comes to the, when you know a real church, it comes and it puts order in the city. It puts order. It's God that's putting order. That's why we have guidelines set up. We have ministries set up. We have things that we do. We have the ways that we do it. And those guidelines are there for order. And who is it controlling this order? It is God. He's not the God of author of confusion. He's not a God of chaos. But God, when God comes into a place, he creates order. And that's what's happening in the city of Beirut. Right, right. Order is coming into this city. Right. Order. Tell your neighbor, order. order. Even in our personal life, we should be progressing. Any, anything in your personal life, you should be progressing. You should be able to look at yourself, as my sister says, an apostolic, and not see yourself the same way that you were last year. You got to look at yourself and say, listen, I'm moving on up. I, I, I'm moving up. I'm going forward. I am advancing. I, I'm becoming more like Jesus. When you see yourself the same way that you were last year, you should say, something is wrong. How many of you right now, I'm going to ask you, every year, there's a year. I, I just had one on my job. Every year, they do what? A report. I'm not trying to talk about what I talked about this morning, but I'm trying to tell you something. Every year, when you are on your job, how many are looking for some type of advancement or progress in your job? Amen? Raise your hand if you're there. Nobody likes to go to their job and every year the boss says, well, we just did the same way we were last year. Uh, the, the, the job didn't grow and uh, there's no increase and uh, I don't know how many will stay on that job for 10 or 20 years and nobody gave you a raise. The same pay that you're making right now is the same pay that you've been making over 20, 30 years. No, if I'm doing something for that amount of time, I'm looking for something to do what? Increase, advance, progress, go forward. God, I'm looking to be here, but I'm telling you, when I get right there next year, I'm looking to be up here. And the year after that, I'm looking to be up here. I understand minimum wage is good, but I'm not staying at minimum wage. I'm making my way up. I'm going up. I'm going forward. I'm getting great. I'm getting, things are happening now for me. And so the kingdom of God should be advancing. That's why I say any saint of God that wants to get a house, God bless you. When you're moving from the apartment into the house, God bless you. You are advancing. When you're putting little Lord, when you're driving a putt putt, but you get into something nice, good. God bless you. Because you are advancing. So all of the things that I'm trying to tell you in the kingdom of God is about advancing. We cannot have any saints or apostolic saints talking about, no, nah, Pastor, I'm just gonna stay right here in this little hut and I'm just gonna be like this. The devil is alive. Not in my house and not in this church. We are going forward. You can stay in your hut and in your little thing out there. But in this house, we're going forward. We are advancing. Somebody say, I thought you're not a prospering preacher. I'm not. But I know if I'm in the kingdom of God, God's kingdom is prospering. So that means what? I'm gonna prosper because I'm in the kingdom of God. And so I thank God. I can't let anything stop what God is doing 
in this house. I will not allow anything to stop what God has wanted to do here in Belgrade. I made up my mind. God, for I, God, I live and God, I die. And so what I'm saying is, God said, whatever you wanted to do, whatever your plan for me was to do in Belgrade, I want it to be done. I don't want to get to glory and be able to look at you and you tell me, son, there were so many other things that I wanted to do with you. There were so many great things that I had for you, but you would not have the faith to believe and that I was able to do it. I don't want to get to the kingdom of God, the glory of God. And he said, I had all of this for you, but you never stepped out on faith. You never believed me. You never understood how much I wanted for you to grow and expand. But you stayed in that little place. And so I don't want to cheat myself out of blessings. I want God to expand and increase. Tell your neighbor, increase. increase. I got to reach to the place that God wants me to reach. I got to go forward. Let me give you some scripture. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 through 14. Look at what the Bible tells me. I'm not worried about what happened tomorrow. I'm going forward. Not as though I had already attained. Either we're already perfect, but I follow after. In that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I counted not myself to apprehend it. But this one thing that I do, forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forth unto those things which are what? Before I press. Tell your neighbor, I press. Where are you pressing? I press toward the what? The mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I'm pressing and I'm going forward. God has given us a vision here at New Life and Tabernacle here in Belgrade. That vision came down from the man of God, Bishop Davy. And that vision is going around through this whole uh, uh, state of Florida. We actually think, I think my understanding, they're thinking about going here into the Caribbean islands. So it's not just state of Florida, but what? It's going out to the Caribbean islands. You're going to hear about New Life Tabernacle in the Caribbean islands. And so what I'm telling you today, we need more preachers. We need more leaders. So if you've got family islands, there in the Caribbean island, get ready, tell them hey, the church is coming God is coming and souls will be saved in the Caribbean island why? because God is advancing his kingdom and am I saying it's only new life? No I'm not just saying only new life I'm talking about the apostolic faith the apostles doctrine, it is expanding and we need more churches we need more saints, more people added to the kingdom of God for it to be established and grow tell your neighbor we need you we need you. We need you. That's why the Bible tells me in Proverbs 29 and 18. Look at what it says. Where there is no vision, the people what? Perish. There is a vision in this house. There's a vision in this house. There's a vision in New Life family. There's a vision here at New Life of Belgrade. If you don't see the vision, something is wrong. And you need to wipe your eyes. Tell your neighbor, wipe your eyes, get the stuff out. Because look at the vision. We are expanding. We are expanding in this place. Don't you see the things that are not the same way? I know you walked in here. You probably walked in and said, wow, things are different. Why? I know why things are different. Why? Because we're expanding. We didn't have enough room. What do we need to do? Bust that wall down. We need more people coming in. What are we doing? We're busting that wall in. What are we going to do? I know that's a brick wall right there, but we're going to bust that wall too. Why? We are expanding. We are growing. And this is what we're doing. We don't have enough seats. Why? We got to get some more seats. So I'm telling you right now, if you start to come here real, you don't get your own time, you ain't going to have your seat. You're going to be arguing with somebody in the house of the Lord. And then I'm going to have to break it up and say, peace be still and be quiet and sit down. You should have got here early. I told you it was going to grow. You should have got here early. And so we are growing. We are expanding. And so there's three things that I want to talk to you very quickly. I'm not going to be long before you. I'm going to get you out of here soon. I know you're going to be going and probably barbecuing tomorrow and meet with the family. That's good. I want you to fellowship. And for many of us, some will be coming back here trying to finish up what's next door. we got to finish it before next Sunday so our kids can get back into their Sunday school class. And so we're working. We're going forward. So number one, we got to advance in our number. We have to advance in our numbers. What am I saying? More Bible studies. More outreach. More talking to people. More inviting them to come to the house of God. 
I was talking about praying with mother this early. And I was telling the Lord bless her. Because it seems like she's bringing her family all in the house of God. I, I look at the, the, the butts and I'm saying to them, they're bringing the souls of people in the house of God. And, 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 and the Boston family and, and the Smith family, I mean, I don't know. It's just so many families that are connected in Bellevue. You talk to one family, they say, well, that's my cousin. That's my cousin. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, invite all your cousins to the house of God. Tell your cousins, say, cuz, I need you to come to the house of God. If everybody starts saying, cuz, come to the house of God, this place will be full of real soon and we will really all be back and everybody is connected in Bellevue somehow I've never been to a city where I walked around and said who is that? That's my cousin <laughs> who is that? That's my uncle I said what, what, what's his last name? He got the last name but that's my cousin I said man we just all family up in this place everybody just cousins. I'm walking around now still saying hey say the God I'm walking around saying hey cuz Hey, it comes. Because we all family in this place. And so we got to advance our numbers, measuring the kingdom progress. I'm measuring the kingdom progress. I'm looking. I remember we started with about three to four families here in New Life at Belclay. But now look at the amount of families that have grown. Look at the amount of families that have added. Look at you that you have come to the house of God. And so we measure the kingdom progress. You say you should not be counted. David shouldn't have counted. But David did it out of the wrong motives. David counted out of the wrong motives. But we're not counting out of that. What am I counting? I'm counting the amount of souls that are being baptized. We have a record keeping. And we were record keeping with finding out, look, this is how many people were baptized, this is how many people filled the Holy Ghost. So that way when we look at it, just like on your job, you look at it on your job, you say, well, this is what we did. God, we want to increase next year. We want to increase this year. We want to add more. So we are what? Taking down report and progress. You want to say, where do you get that from? Well, look at the word of God in Acts chapter 1 verse 15. Look at what the Bible says. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of names together were about what? A hundred and twenty. We're starting this thing and they had about 120. 120 filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. 120 in the upper room. 120 were baptized. And so look at what the scripture tells me. This was the first time that they got together. But let's go further and see if that number changed. Look at Acts chapter 2 verse 41. Pull up it up in the word of what the word says. It says that they that gladly received his word were what? Baptized. And that same day they were added unto them about how many now? 3,000 3, souls. You see the number jump so far? <laughs> We're not trying to just stay at this number at a hundred something, but we're trying to jump into the three thousands. I told you this church would be a church of three, 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 three thousand five hundred. Thirty five hundred would be. Thirty five hundred would be from through like a bell ring. And then after that, we need a daughter church. So I need somebody, Lord, get somebody ready to pastor. Get somebody ready to lead a church. Because we need somebody to pastor the daughter church. And that church will grow and be thirty five hundred. And so even after that, that's why. I said, we busted down that wall. We came in here, and I'm saying, well, hey, yeah, we need to bust down this wall. And Minister Corinthians, after I left, and gave me a call. I went to West Palm Beach to just get something. And you job, I mean, those who know that, remember that wall was right there. And so I'm saying, we're talking about, hey, busting down this wall. And I'm saying, yeah, I really would like it, but we just need the manpower to get it done. We need the brothers to show up. We need some help in this place to show up. And all of a sudden, I go to West Palm Beach to pick up something. I get a call from my brother, Brother Jake. He calls me and he says, hey, uh, just want to let you know, how far are you out? I said, well, I'm in West Palm Beach. I'm on my way back. He said, okay, just want to let you know the wall is gone. I said, what wall? What, what, what wall are you talking about? What You did knock down a wall in the church or something? I, I'm about to rebuke over the phone. What, what you did do? Knock down a wall in the church? He said, no, the wall is gone. You remember that wall, the back wall? I said, y'all did it? Yeah, it was two of us. Two? Only two of y'all did that? He said, yeah. I'm sitting there. I get back and the wall is gone. And so when I saw the wall go, I said, oh, they on board with this vision. I start texting every brother and trying to tell everybody that wasn't that word, hey, we need your help. Come up here. We need your help now. Now. Come on. Come on. Because the wall is so I thank God when we can get the souls of man 
that I want to get a hold of this vision and say, hey, if God said that we can do it, we're going to get it done. And so when I talk about this thing, then we are talk, thinking about taking more land. I'm thinking about taking more land. You say, well, hey, yes, once we run out of room in this building, I'm already, we already looking at another land. I'm already looking at something else that we're about to get. I'm already claiming it, it shall be ours. It's going to be ours. You might say, I don't think so. Watch. When we get up in that service and we have that first service, watch what I say. I'm going to dance, dance, dance all night because I told you what God was going to do. And it is ours. And we didn't even have to build it up, but it's already ours. You said you're talking about it over the internet. I don't care about the devil. Hear me? Hear this devil. Hear what I'm telling you. And so we need somebody that's buying it in the spirit. Put up back to chapter 11, verse 12. I want everybody to read it because I need this in your spirit. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violent and the violent taken by force. Tell your neighbor, we got to take this thing by force. Hallelujah. Got to take it by force. The devil ain't just going to easily give it over to us. He ain't going to say, oh, okay. You want this? Okay, no. We got to rebuke. We got to cast down. We got to forbid. We got to teach Bible studies. I know they might look at us and look at us crazy and be like, what you talking about that little church? We got a whole bunch of churches. All these churches thought they were going to do something. But not this one. This is the kingdom of God and we are going forward. And there is no devil in hell that can stop what God is has doing for us. And that's so look at the scripture in Acts chapter 4 verses 4. How bet many of them which heard the word believed. And how many? First we talked about 3,000. But where are we at right now? How bet many of them which heard the word believed. And the number of men. Now I didn't say women. I said just men. Men was about how many? 5,000. We went from three, tw uh, 120 to 3,000. Now we at what? 5,000. Don't tell me it's not good to number. Don't tell me it's not good to, to number and to advance. Because the Bible let me know. Somebody on that day began to say, hey, uh, count the number. Count the people that got baptized. How many? How many? How many? How many? We, we, we had 2,000. I don't know who the person that was counting. I, I would have been tired by that time. But they counted. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. We got 20. We got 100 that been filled with the Holy Ghost. We got this many. We got 2,000 filled with the Holy Ghost. We got 3,000 baptized. Now we have 4,000. We got, they're counting the numbers. Of how many people are being born again into the kingdom of God? Amen. Anyone that wants the kingdom of God to advance have a mentality that souls must be saved. Right. Souls must be saved. Which leads me to my second point. We got to change the way we think for this thing to advance. Tell your neighbor, we got to change the way we think. We got to change the way we have done things. It's quiet in here. Everybody not believing me. We got to be on one accord. Come on, open up your mouth. We got to change the way that we think. And we got to change the way we have always done things. Some people are used to small churches. Uh, not me. Uh uh. Uh uh. We can start off small, but we got to grow. I don't know about you, but I look at my daughter right now. She's one years old. If she was one years old and now all of a sudden one years old now, and when she gets to 13, she's still acting like she won, something is wrong. Something is not happening. There is no growth happening. And my daughter's still walking around using the restroom on herself. Something is wrong. I'm looking for her to do what? Grow and to mature. So, saints of God, tell your neighbor, you got to grow. We got to mature. So look at Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's at least what you should be doing, your reasonable service. And be not conformed to what this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what that is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. If we don't change our mind or our behavior, I'm telling you, nothing will change. What is insanity? 
Doing the same thing you've always done and expecting a different outcome. Right. Right. That's insanity. That's crazy. You're doing the same thing, but you're expecting something different. That's with your life. That's with anything. So in the kingdom of God, we got to grow. So I can't start to think like I used to think. I can't think small. If you have a business, don't think small. If you have things that you don't, don't think small. Don't think about a small little job. Don't think about the small little thing. Don't think about the small things. We need to expand and grow. God wants us to have a mindset. It must grow. And anytime you don't have a preacher or a pastor or somebody with a vision that wants to see things grow, I'm telling you that thing was not, God is not in that thing. Why? Because God is not something that's doing things on a small scale. God is great. He's a great God. He's a big God. God's plan is bigger than ours. God always is ahead of our plan. His plan is bigger. So sometimes I know we might begin to say, well, man, God going to use me. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, God is going to use you. God is going to use you. God is going to use you. Come on, everybody not talking, but that's so we're going to get it good. Say, God is going to use you. Tell your neighbor, God is going to use you. I know you might think, well, I'm not that type of person. I'm not, I don't know how I can do that, those things. Uh, Pastor, I don't know if I can teach a Sunday school. I, I don't know if I can teach the adults. I don't know if I can be on the praise team. I, I, I don't know if I can do I don't know if I can preach. I don't know if I can do that, but look at what the Bible tells me. It told it to Jeremiah, but he's talking to you as well. Look at Jeremiah 29, verses 11. He says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a what? Expected. Expected. God already knows what your ending is going to be, but he's going to be an expected end. The Bible lets me know sometimes people get worried about what people think and what people say, but I don't care about how people are looking at me. You can look at me all you want to. You can look at me. You can say, why that crazy man up there talking to that crazy preacher? He talking about 3,500. Oh, yeah. Keep looking at me. I don't give a care because Jeremiah 1 and 8. God told Jeremiah the same thing, and he's telling me, be not afraid of their faces. So when people start looking at you when you praise God, just look at him right to and start praising God. Just look at him and start praising God. Look at me all you want to, but I'm going to start praising God. When you start looking at me and see me bounce around, I don't give a care. Start looking at me. Watch this. Watch me turn. Watch me turn. You might say I look crazy. I don't care. Watch me doing this hot step. I'm doing it all for the kingdom of God. I don't care about your faces. And I don't care about what you think. I just care. That's why I praise God. I give God praise. That's why people look at it and say, why, why, why y'all looking at another piece of land? Because I'm excited about what God is going to do. If God gave the word, I'm excited. You know how it is on Christmas. You know how it is on Christmas. These kids come to you, and when they say they ask for certain things, on their birthdays, they come to you, and when you tell them, I'm going to get that gift for you, I'm going to do this, they keep coming to you. Don't you remember that you said you're going to do this, Daddy? All right, I just want to make sure. Hey, Mama, don't you remember you said you're going to do this? I just want you to make sure. And when they get it, how do they act? They get excited. And so I'm talking to the father that owns everything. I'm talking to my daddy. And when my daddy says, son, I got some land for you. Son, I got some expansion for you. Son, there are some souls in that city. And I want you to go and get it, son. Then as we get it, say, for me, daddy, what have I done? He said, ain't nothing you did. It's just him. And I begin to get excited because I begin to say, for us, daddy, we about to get this daddy You about to do this daddy And I'm getting excited So that's why I praise God That's why I worship God That's why I give him glory That's why I praise God That's why I preach the way I preach That's why I sing That's why we shout That's why the kids are running around That's why the tambourine is playing That's why my wife is on the whistle Because we are excited about what God is going to do Let me give you scripture. I'm a pastor that gives scripture. I don't just poop and holler and do all this, but let me give you scripture. Isaiah 54, verse 1 to 3. Look at what the Bible says to us. Sing. Tell your neighbor, sing. Sing. Sing, old childless woman. Put it in the NLT. Make it simple. You who have never given birth 
Never been involved in building a church. Never been involved with babies being born in the kingdom of God. Never been put over a church. But he says, oh, childless woman, or oh, you who have never given birth, break into a loud and joyful song. That's why we sing. That's why we praise God. Look at what it says, oh, Jerusalem, you who have never been in labor, for the desolate woman now has more children than the woman who lives with her husband, says the Lord. Enlarge your house. Tell your neighbor right now. We got to enlarge this house. Build in addition. You see that? We're building an addition. Look at what it says. Spread out your home and spare no expenses. Tell somebody here, you can't be cheap. We got to give. We got to give into the kingdom of God. We have already given and we're going to have to give some more because we got some more things that we got to do. So tell your brother, hey brother, hey sister, come on out of your pocket. Come on out of your pocket. Come on out of your pocket. I do even drop everybody off. I'm riding home by myself. If you was in a car with me, you'd be like, this man is crazy. But I'm in the car rejoicing. I'm in the bus just, the bus just shaking. What time I got pulled over? We sir, we just want to know if you was, uh, are you all right? You been drinking? Uh-uh, I'm just excited. You don't know nothing about this, but I'm just excited. So don't think that I got a ticket or I got pulled over DUI if you saw it, if you saw the bus sit on the side. But I got pulled over because the bus was going like this. What was I doing? I was rejoicing in the bus. I was excited in the bus. I was praising God. I said, God, I see what you're doing, God. I God, I trust you, God. I see how you're growing this thing, God. God, it is you doing it, God. And I'm so grateful to be a part of it. For you will soon be bursting out the seams, at the seams. Your descendants will occupy other nations and resettle the ruling cities. These cities, this city of Belgrade has been ruined. But God has put it here. We're going to build this thing. I told you, houses are going to go up. New apartments are going to go up. This is before all of that got established. Houses are going to go up. New communities are going to go up. Jobs are going to come up. All of that money in West Palm Beach and all of that over there in the Palm Island has to come over here. We need that here, God. We need that here. We need you to build houses, communities. We need school. We need all of these things, God. Because if we are a blessed people, we need the people to be able to say, that's the city of Goshen. That's the city of Goshen. I know it's called Belgrade, but that's the city of Goshen. Over there, that light is shining bright, and they're blessed over there in Belgrade. How did that city turn around? Tell your neighbor, it was God. So I want to let you know, huh? What God is telling and showing me. Look at what the Bible says in Genesis 13 and 16. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth. So that if a man can number the dust of the earth. Then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it. And in the breadth of it. For I will give it unto thee. That don't get you excited. God, I say, you really going to do this? I said, I'm going to give it to thee. Right. I'm going to give it to you. Because if your heart is in the right place, your motives are in the right place. It's not about your come up, but it's about his kingdom advancing. Yeah. That's why God is doing this. Because his kingdom is advancing. Which leads me to my last point. We are advancing or doing this for God and not ourselves. Amen. Tell your neighbor, it is not about us. But it's about Jesus. There's a song. It's not about us. But it's about Jesus. Jesus is already rocking to it. It's not about us. But it's about Jesus. If I can sing it right now, I would. But we ain't got time. I got to let you go. Look at First Chronicles chapter 29 verses 1. Make it simple for us, sir. Look at what it says. Then King David turned into the entire assembly and said, My son Solomon, whom God has clearly chosen as the next king of Israel, is still young and inexperienced. Lord, I don't know what I'm doing here in Belgrade. I ain't never planted a church. I've been sitting up under Bishop David, Pastor Collins, under leadership. I don't know, but if you would give me the understanding, and if you would lead me, God, and if you would help me, Lord God, give me the wisdom 
to have righteous judgment, to judge a great number of people. And give me those who are around me that can help me. Give me those around me that I can be accountable to. Give me those around me that will, Lord God, no matter what, that they will help in the kingdom of God. God, give me the resources. Give me the people that love you and love your kingdom. And then the Bible says, look at what it says. The work ahead of him is enormous. This work ahead is enormous. We got a lot of work to do. This is just the beginning. For the temple he will build is not mere mortal. It is for the Lord God himself. We're building this thing for who? For God himself. And if you know anything about Solomon's temple, the things that David set aside to go in that temple, it wasn't no cheap stuff. It wasn't no cheap stuff. They didn't just do stuff haphazardly. But they did it in a way that God would be pleased with it. And God would, do, would, would look upon that and say, I can dwell in that place. We got to stay with the pattern that God has given us. If we want God to stay, stay a part of this thing and be a part of God, let me give you some understanding. Genesis chapter 6, verse 14 to 13. Look at what the Bible says. Somebody say, well, why do you guys have to do it like this? Because God has given us a pattern. God has given us a pattern, and that pattern we must follow if we want God to be a part of it. That's why I do things. That's why we what? We baptize in the name of Jesus Christ. Repentance. Acts chapter 2 verse 38. And holiness is always right. There's a highway to holiness. We are preaching that. This is a pattern. Our lifestyle. What we do. How we do it. What we do it. Where we do it. And the way that we do it. It's a pattern that God has given us. God is up on this thing of called pattern. There's the things and guidelines that he's given us that we must follow. How do you say that Pastor Garment? Because the man of God and the word of God. They follow a pattern. And when they follow the pattern. They were saved. When they followed all the pattern, they had success. Look at what the Bible tells me. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shall thou make it in an ark, and thou shalt shall pitch it within and without the with pitch. Go to the next verse, sir. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it up. And then it goes down the list. The length of the ark shall be three a hundred cubits, and the breadth of the fifty cubits, and the height of thirty cubits. This is the ark of the Noah's ark. But take it down to verse twenty-two. Look at what it says in verse twenty-two. Thus did Noah, according to all. Somebody say all. all. All that God commanded him, so did he. Not just some, not just a little. But I was I was going to, I was coming to church a little bit. Uh, I, I was I was giving a little bit of my time. I was I was doing this, God, and I was I was doing that, I was doing this, and I was doing that. But we need to do all that God commands us. If we do not do that, we're off on another pattern. We're following another different pattern. Let me notice, let me throw you what God said in conversation to Moses, Exodus 25, verse 8 to 9. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. How many want God to dwell here? Right. How many want God to dwell in your home? How many want God to dwell wherever you go? But we have to do it according. Look at what it says. According to all that I shew or show thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. God, how do you want me to build this church in Belgium? The way that I told you, look at the pattern and stay up on the pattern. Has any brother ever put any shelf together and you put the Emmanuel onto the side? The instructions. I did that before. I talked about it. I've done that before when I looked at the cabinet and I said, I can fix this myself and I don't need the instruction manual. So I put the instruction manual onto the side. I start drilling, zip, 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 and I think I got it, but when I stand it up, is leaning to the side like this. It's doing a lean to it. I'm like, what's wrong with it? You pushing this kid going back to the lean. What? I messed up. I should have looked at the instruction manual because now this thing is off. I don't want the church of the living God to be off. We got to do it according to what? The pattern. That's why we can't come up with our own stuff. I can't start preaching anything. I, I, I can't just let anybody preach up in this altar, in this pulpit. We just can't allow this anything to go right. Because holiness is still right. Tell your neighbor, holiness is still right. Holiness, I'll tell you, you can be baptized and repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus and be filled with the Holy Ghost. But if you don't have holiness in your life, you will not see God. I know somebody saying, really, for real? I just, want, I just thought all I had to do was be baptized in Jesus' name. No. Once you repent and are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, God says, be ye holy. Somebody, I, I got a bridge for you right there. Somebody don't believe me. 
Well, you don't believe me. Let's look at the word. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Call of peace. Everybody read it. Call of peace with all men. And holiness. Without which no man shall see the Lord. So not only do I need to be repentant. Not only do I need to be sorry, not only do I need to be baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, but I got to live a holy life if I want to see him. You won't see him if you're not living a holy life. You won't see him if you're looking at unholy things. You won't see him involved in unholy relationships. You won't see him involved in unholy things and unholy things or unholy places that you go. God says, be ye holy, for I am holy. God is very particular on how he wants things done. Why do we follow the pattern? Look at what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 8 verses 5. They serve in a system of worship that is only a copy, a shadow of the real one in heaven. For when Moses was getting ready to build the tabernacle, God gave him this warning. Be sure that you make everything According to the pattern I have shown you here on this mountain. So that day, when I got the word from Bishop David, sat down with him, he's already told me, stick to what I told you to do, and God will bless you. And I'm seeing it for myself. It is happening right before my eyes. And saints, in your life, if you stick with the pattern of what God has told you to do from the Word of God and don't add your two cents to it, don't try to switch it up and say, well, let me add this in there and I'll just change it up a little bit. I tell you, you will not work. You have to do it according to God's pattern. Let us stand. God's kingdom is advancing. We are going forward. I'm glad that you are here and heard this message. Because there's more that we're going to do. Brothers, I need your strength and I need your help. I need you. I've got to count on you and lean on you. I need your strength. Sisters, we need your prayers. And there's things that God is putting you to be able to do. We need your help for the kingdom of God to expand. Right. It's going to grow whether you want to be involved or not. But God is saying, why don't you join so that you will be blessed as well. If you're here today and you want to be a part of God's kingdom, first you must repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But those who have said, Lord, I want to do more to the kingdom, let us all pray. And let us ask God, God, help us to do it the way that you want us to do it. Help us to stay, Lord God, involved with your kingdom. Help us to put you first, and let's stick to the pattern. So if you're here today, why don't you come? We're going to pray. If you need to be baptized, my brother, you need to come. If you have been baptized in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, you have built something that God did not say. You need to go down in Jesus' name. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad you're coming to new life. But if you have not been baptized, or if you don't remember, you say, well, I think he said in Jesus' name. You need to be sure. And there's nothing wrong with being sure that you were baptized correctly. You have to be baptized correctly. So if you're here today, we want to pray for you. So let us all lift up our hands right now. We're going to ask God to help us. Father God, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love and your kindness toward us, oh God. I thank you for the word that you have, Lord God, given to me that has been passed down from my pastor. Father, I paid attention. I hear and heard what he said. And Father, that message right now, you've given it, and Lord, it laid on my heart to be able to give it to the saints here in new life. Father, you are in control. And you are a part of this thing, God. And we want to make sure you stay a part of it. Father, let every soul that I've heard of this message and every message, let them not turn to the pastor and get upset. Let them not be angry at the messenger, oh God. But it is you that speaking through the messenger to talk to the people as well as myself. Father, I want to see your kingdom.
the last one. Father, add to this church. We've already taken down the walls. So, Lord, we got more seats. If we need to get more seats, Father, we just want you to continue to add. More outreach, Lord God. More Bible study. Lord God, more classes, more sessions. More leadership sessions, God. We want the marriages to be strong, God. We want the mothers to help us to pray. We want the mothers to teach the young girls. God, we want the elderly, Lord God, the men, to teach the young men, oh God. Father, we need more, God, resources. Father, we ask that you give us, Lord, favor in this city. From the commission, God, to the city council. Father, to every wickedness that's in this city, it must come down in the name of Jesus. I bind it and rebuke it. God forbid it to operate any further. God, you've given us the open door. We will take this thing, Lord God, by violence, but God, we wrestle not against wrestling. But the wickedness in Lord principalities, oh God, and rulers in high places, God, in darkness, oh God, we ask that you right now tear it down for your kingdom. Lay your hand upon us right now. And Father, we give you permission to interrupt our lives that thy kingdom shall come. Thy will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands and we can come. We love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful uh, Memorial Day. For those brothers, if you're able to, we'll be here on uh, tomorrow at uh, 12 o'clock trying to fix up and finish this fellowship hall. But if you have to be with your families, I understand, just send me a text and let me know, hey, that I'm going to be with the family so that I won't be expecting you. But as many that will come, it will only take us a few. If you would come and help us. God bless you. And have a safe, wonderful memorial day service. And no Monday night Bible study. There's no Monday night Bible study. All right? I know you're sad, but we no Monday night Bible study. We'll pick it back up on Wednesday. So we'll be texting and calling on Wednesday. God bless you. God bless you. Let the kingdom of God be advanced.
finally got that thing going, huh? Yeah. Hey, Junior. Yeah. So they had it this morning for service? Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember what I told you this morning? Yes. But yes. the last year and then on the offer. Yes. So what do you think we can do? We probably need two more ice cream, but we probably 